a lot of air intakes. That's a lot. Oh, Nelly! Today, we're looking at the most incredible builds in Kerbal Space Program. A space program simulation game that features realistic physics and more importantly, excellent explosions. I'm pro speedrunner Graham Pooh Bear and joining me we've got Hello, it's Scott Manley here. To walk us through the science behind the space bound masterpieces and give us his honest reactions. Which one of these next four builds by KSP creators is going to get the highest rating? Stick around and find out. Yeah, Scott, are you ready? I mean, I'm always ready for some Kerbal. Let's go to Mars. Hold on, hold you on. You can't do that for real. This, I mean, I haven't seen that many rockets, but this doesn't seem safe, like is my first thought, Scott. As safe is a relative term when you're trying to get to Mars. I mean, you have to kind of, you know what they say, you, you can't make a, an omelet without breaking a few eggs. You've got to push the limits, right? The tyranny of the rocket equation is a real thing that forces us to build monster rockets. Looks like Scott and I share a love for rockets and explosions. I'm looking forward to this flying. Whoa, Stage one. Gonna go. Yeah, look at it. Oh, it's just going. It's not really. It's, it's, it looks like it's ponderous. breathing. Yeah, that that's called that's soft joint physics for you. It's kind of flexing under the loads. Yeah. Oh. yeah, yeah, they're just dumping those offshore. Oh yeah, explosions. You see? Gold. Okay. Here we go. And they need to okay. make a departure burn to Mars. So they're trying to bleed off as much of their speed as possible so they can land. Oh yeah, retro burn time. Here we go, Here we coming go. down to the surface. Oh. And, and very gently, because you, that was... oh yeah. Yeah, okay. good job. That is one heck of a la long ladder. You could practically base jump from that. Oh, there you the go. Fact, there's no, there, no air. There you go, he does base jump. And so the problem is, they have to wait there for like a year to be in the right place. It looks what I thought like a rocket should look like. I'm gonna give it a, a, a C plus. I, I'm gonna say I give that thing an S tier because it perfectly illustrates my, how much propellant you need to use for these crazy, ridiculous plans that people have. You know, I'm just not into the science as much as I'm into the, uh, the swag, I guess. So <laughs> let's check out our next one. I like how it's just wide enough to fit on that runway. Yeah. And that's a lot of jet. So what I'm seeing here is regular air breathing jet engines and the dual mode Sabre engines. We've got nice diversity of intakes there. A lot of air intakes. That's a lot. Oh, of Nelly! Yeah. <laughs> oh, I hope they're not going to clip the control, sir. Oh, oh, I enjoy this. Okay. Wow, it's, it's this thing looks like it's moving. Like it looks like it has speed. Uh, you know, it's not going that fast yet. That's the thing. Look at those tiny solar panels for this <laughs> massive aircraft. What, what are, are they, they doing deploying here? here? They're opening all the cargo bay doors. Have they got another rocket inside it? Oh, we got a satellite. Oh, it's like a satellite. Hey. I it's such a. I, I don't know why, but those solar thing. panels, I just feel like they're not getting enough power. I feel like there's just no way they're getting <laughs> enough power to this thing. Yeah, you. How much power does it need? Oh, wait, going inside. Oh, here we go. Here we okay. go. We're going back in. Um, so now go through is the. Is that a normal? Oh. Normal. Is this normal way to land here? Uh, is this... I think that is a very high angle of attack. This build is really flopping around. Is there any hope for a safe landing? That doesn't seem like a particularly stabilized re-entry. <laughs> <laughs> I love how it deployed these what tiny is the, parachutes. I was gonna say, I don't feel like the parachute is having that much effect on anything. In my mind, when I think about rich people traveling to space for fun in the future, it's in a plane like thing like that. So I'm gonna give that I'm gonna give that one a solid in gamer speak a B. Problem is, it loses points because it spun out of control and re-entry, and then they had to use the parachutes to get back. That, come on, you gotta build your track your center of mass correctly. This is this is only a B because it it almost killed everyone on board. You think that one could be built in real life? Hell no. <laughs> As you can imagine, the KSP community has devoured the game forwards and back, and even come up with some special self-imposed challenges, like creating the galaxy's longest space train with an infinite decimal thrust to weight ratio, a word that I definitely understand, or even put a warship boat into space with enough boosters. Even with all these crazy builds constantly coming out of the KSP community, there are always new builds being made that still shock everyone with their, well, let's call it creativity, such as this next build. 
This one's just titled Building a Snake. Building a, a snake? Like snakes on a plane? No, the snake is snake the plane. Snake on a rocket ship, yeah. So they're building like a really, really fine rocket, which is a technical term. What's the advantage of like a very thin rocket? Uh, they're very aerodynamic because they have a very small cross section. The disadvantage, of course, is they flop around like a wet noodle, right? Have you ever tried pushing spaghetti? Mm -hmm. Let's let's see this thing fly. Let's see it fly. Here it goes. Oh, 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 it's a bit noodly. It's a bit that's, noodly. That's, that's uh, not gonna work. Yes. That's not gonna Explosions. work. Explosions. Pushing spaghetti? I see it now. Thanks, Scott, for teaching me noodly rockets 101. I think he's gonna need to put the rocket engines at the top. He instead of pushing them, he's pulling. Be pulling. Yeah, I think it's yeah. gonna turn. Yeah, maybe he can make it work, but if he turns it into a space train, that might work better. Yeah, that, oh, that's gonna wow, work. Wow, this thing's yeah uh yeah he's, he's this is what he's doing is he's solving the engineering problems and this is what kerbal space program is about right no can he steer it oh it's like <laughs> it's got like a dragon tail going on here yeah it's got a bit of a shimmy I, i've i've done this before the dragon that flies through the air it Ugh. is wild come on come on come on come on come on come on victory <laughs> you have to kill someone this time Oh, like see, dragon the, aerodynamics. This is how I would have do everything in Kerbal. Is just oh, bigger rocket. Yeah. Bigger yeah, bigger rocket. rocket. Yeah. Yeah. Bigger rocket, bigger yeah, explosion. I, okay. Did he get it to space? He got it to space. It's, no, not really. Forty-five. He's still going up. He's going to make it. He is above seventy kilometers. He has escaped the atmosphere. The snake is in space, and now the snake is falling back. So I'm gonna give that one uh, an A in coolness factor. So normally it's such flagrant disregard for physics would give it an F tier, but given that there was a great deal of engineering involved and a lot of problem solving, uh, that does bring it up to a C minus. So it's clear to me that swag and science just don't always go hand in hand. Can this final build win me and Scott over? Let's find out. We got one more here. Oh, one more. Ah, uh, here we go. Million ton rocket. A million Stop. ton rocket. The last one we saw was only 14,000. Yeah, this guy's going for a one ton rocket and, and he's not going one upward. Billion. He seems to just be building out. Right, think laterally. Yeah. That's what we're doing. Yes, one hour later. So he's basically hit the button and it's giving him like one frame per hour as it's doing the math. Oh my gosh. There. A million Moved tons of rocket. Frames. Wow. Wow. Look at that. Oh, it is passing in front of the moon. What choreography. And he's steering it as well. How many dollars would a rocket like this cost to make? Oh, wait. wait $100,000 per ton. So okay. we're talking $100,000 million. So $100 billion <laughs> if you were to. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. And you would just have a factory just building this. Right? It would just churn out lots of rockets. Bolt them together, and then of course you'd have to build the launch site and everything else. So yeah, and let's say site. twenty billion. It would never get funded. But look at that! It's going. Wow. It's going as well. Yeah. So okay. this thing stage. Oh, there it's staging. Oh, how beautiful that looks. Truly the mark of an artisan. Oh, are they gonna? Oh, that was so uh, cool. Beautiful. Okay, that was one of the coolest things I've ever seen. Now that is art. He has to figure out how to get it into orbit when he has almost no propellant, I guess. There's another one. Oh, look at that. Look, these are all falling apart individually. That's kind of cool. One megaton rocket. I love that stuff and falling back. Very nice. Okay, now you have your fuel depot in orbit. You can now use that to, you know, refuel and set out to explore the rest of the solar system. All right, I got to give that one on pure swag factor. I'm giving that one an S plus. Oh yeah, it was beautiful. I mean, it cleaned up after itself. All the debris yes! didn't all fall in. What? Right? It was. It wasn't too physical, but I, I think that on on many levels, it does deserve. I think I think I'm an A plus on that one. You know what? If that is what the future holds for us, right? I want to live in that future. I'm saying, I absolutely agree with you on that.